morning guys and girls here we are again it is a very very bitter Sunday morning it's currently about four o'clock in the morning we are at a place called Tresillion a place I love a place I am fished for four years I think um, yeah just when the weather and the tides time year just and I normally fish it like Christmas January time um, and then March and April time uh, you can get some good get you know some good fishing off yeah you're quite high up um, so everything's got to be handballed up um, yeah we've had some interesting stories on how to land fish on here which I'll uh, tell you about but yeah, at the moment, it's two and a half hours to high water. First rods have just gone out. I got short three foot pulleys, uh, five LBMXs, uh, the right hand rod, I got ragworm and a whole squid. Left hand rod, ragworm and a crab. I've also brought my Conti rod, three small looks down the edge to catch some pouting and rockling. And on there, little strips of bluey, strips of ragworm, etc. So I've had bites already, straight away indications, rattly. So pretty much on all three rods. So the Conti rod is actually going as we speak. So that's got three hooks on there, so I'm gonna leave that for a little bit. So you have to bear with me. This is my first time trying, um, there's like a, a lamp for the GoPro. So every time I look at the GoPro, I'm getting blinded. <laughs> and then I'm looking at my tips, I can't see my rods. So, um, yeah, I'm looking at my rods now and I can't see them. All I can see is lights. <laughs> oh, I can see where this is going. So yes, target today is pouting, rocklin, conger eels, um, by conger eels and codlin you do get good cod off you I've had cod off you up to just under £10 uh, a bit of a manix uh, session that was probably one of my last trips on you but let's see, I'll go through the stories later um, because if you know Tresillian the right hand side of Tresillian you're probably thinking how would you land you know, decent congers and decent cod because you can't see the water, you've just got to handball them up. But obviously you can't handball a 20 pound eel up or a double figure cod. No. But you can, but it's not worth the risk. So, yes, we're here, we're giving it a go. Let's see what the next couple of hours brings. Yeah, I'm getting bites on all three rods now. So I've got the Conti rod over the edge, 30 yards with a three hook flapper on size fours um, saltwater champions I think they are and then I'm getting little rattles on the left hand rod and then I just had a nice bite on the right hand rod which is probably an eel or a dog so we're going to wind that in Doggy! Yes. <laughs> yes. Love them. So yeah, nailed. Yeah, see? See, if you had a dongle on, that's hooked on the bottom hook. See, so would you have hooked this doggy? I don't know. But yeah, not using a dongle anymore, only for the hounds. So yeah, first cast, rag and squid, um, and a three foot poly. So, happy days, flag beaten. Hee <laughs> hee. 
yeah it's always nice to catch something first cast this time of year because to be fair this is probably one of the worst winters of fishing for me yes if it weren't for that spotted that thorny and that codlin the other week <laughs> I might as well go back up fishing so yeah, I'm being a bit lazy. I was gonna bait them up as they come in. God, that light is bright. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah being a bit lazy, but I'm allowed. Some lovely ragworm from Keith. Cheers, Keith. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so stick it to rag, rag and squid on one, and rag and crab on the other. Yeah, it's a wicked mark there. It's just not for the faint hearted, don't get me wrong. You know, it's not easy landing fish, but it's a good mark, you know. The other cliff over to the left, uh, there's a beach separating the two marks, but that one you can climb down to land fish. I think they call that divers. I'm not sure, but I only fished it once. I prefer it this side. Yes. It don't look a big bait, um, but believe it or not, now that's six worm and a whole squid, literally folded and wrapped into a sausage. You see, I don't like long baits where the hooks are in, you know, five, five, six inches apart. You know, I like the, basically, I like the, the bend of the top hook touching the eye of the bottom hook, if that makes sense. So, yes. Someone made a comment saying, <laughs> is that a pair of shorts you're using for your rag? Well, I run out of, um, cloths for fishing so I'm using very old clothes so I'm just cutting them up so yes <laughs> but yeah so the rig it is ledges out there it is um, you can lose the odd end but that's down to your hooks getting caught but um, I do fish rotten bottom I use a pin and foam as you all know that's 20 pound weak link uh, about four inches long uh, two 1 -oh split rings from VMO and then those split rings go either side of the eye of the lead and then a 25 mil panel pin with a bit of foam goes straight through all three and that is what we call a pin and foam so this one's ready to go right then let's get it out Pouting on. Looks like they're pouting anyway. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at that front beauty! Yeah, boy! Ah. Yeah, look at that. Lovely pouting. Yeah, you can tell it's a pouting because of the size of it. Poor cod don't really get this big, I don't think. And no scales are coming off it. So that's an absolute beautiful potent. So yeah, uh, fishing's been all right. I'm recorded everything because it's been quite um, quite hectic. Uh, about half a dozen dogfish. Uh, first potent. I've been missing bites, but the swell is massive. Um, the swell's got to be five, six foot at least. So yeah, quite a few doggies um, on a potent. So yeah, it's doing all right. It's about an hour to high water. So. I'll keep the baits going out, 
hopefully we can get that cobble in. Beautiful. Slipped on the grass then. Be non-stop action, non-stop. Um, as you can see, it's just starting to get light now. Um, probably well into double figures of doggies. Um, literally, they're on the bait straight away. The Conti is very quiet. We've just started to have rattles again on the Conti. Um, I've got a bite on both rods now, but the right-hand one's a bit more. Looks like a eel. So I'll give it two seconds. But yeah, I had to wind in about a half hour ago and have 20 minute snooze. Oof, literally just. You know, when you hit a brick wall and you just. Yeah. So they've been out there about 10, 15 minutes. I've got a bite on them already, so yes. We're about half hour into the ebb now. So give it another two hours. And uh, fingers crossed it should be good. Casting's a bit ropey. I'm frozen to the core. I've got two hoodies on and a jacket. Ah, yeah. So I'm not expecting miracles today. <laughs> but it's out there, it'll do. Right, let's carry on. Fish on the left hand rod. Yeah, I just lost the GoPro for a good 40 45 minutes trying to get the sunrise. So, and then a doggy and an eel in that space of time. Bait going out, half a dozen worm and a squid head bound up halfway back on itself, wrapped in elastic with a squid head on the bottom. <laughs> what a mess. Well, we all know what caused that. Oh, I got a slime. Oh, 
When I first initially picked the rod up, I thought, oh no, cod, because it gave me the old <laughs> nod, 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 it's a cod, but no, oh, it's an eel, oh look at you are behaving yourself, are you? <laughs> you get eel. So yeah, it's so, um, not been a bad morning, a um, couple of small bootlaces, this half little tidy one, I'm pouting, I'm probably somewhere between 12 and 15 doggies, so yeah, um, it's a bit of a nightmare landing fish on this spot, uh, not a lot of people fish this spot because of that reason, um, so what I'll do is I'll go over now, put some fresh baits out, sit down and tell you a, a story or two from on here. So, but yeah, a nice, a nice eel. <laughs> right, behave, will you behave? <laughs> Try to do a nice picture of it. <laughs> Cat pose. Yeah, love, lovely fish, lovely, oh, behave. I'm gonna run you through a little, a quick little story. I'll try and make it quick. Um, my cousin Hugh Jones, some of you know him as Viking. We used to spend a lot of time on here through the winters. And we kept hooking into fish that we couldn't land, including uh, we had some eels to 30 pound, if not over, we just couldn't land them. So we come up with a method. <laughs> so one day I caught a fresh pouting, a big pouting. Um, enough for four big baits so we caught a couple of straps on him I put a big chunk of belly and guts out and Rod screams off like a hound and we knew it was a good eel so we dragged it to this left hand corner as you're looking out to see um, but the method that we come up with was a, sp a spinning rod right now behind us by here the steps going down to the beach just over my right shoulder you know, it was a little bit of a trek what probably 30 seconds to get down there um, 
so what happened was I, I fought the fish to this left hand corner which is straight down because the right hand corner it kind of like noses out so you can't see down we could see it was a good deal we thought it was 20 pound plus so I got a spinning rod with a plain lead on I brought the fish in with my big rod to this corner I gave the rod to Hugh, Hugh kept the fish on the surface. I picked up the spinning rod with a four or five ounce plain lead. I ran all the way down to the beach because it was dark, I could see his headlamp. And I cast the plain lead up onto the cliff here, away from him. Tightened it up because the lead obviously dug into the long grass. Tightened it up so the line was bowstring tight down to the beach. Run all the way up. Grabbed the lead, unclipped it, and I had a big oval split ring on the end of the line. So he gave me the tip of my big rod. I clipped the oval link on and slid it down, hoping it would go over the bimini twist down onto the rig. So it was, the line was quite slack at this point. So I ran all the way back down, <laughs> picked up the spinning rod, wound the slack. So Hugh kept the eel on the surface with my big rod and then I had the spinning rod line down to the rig tight. So as I was pulling the eel towards the beach, he was keeping it tight, keeping the eel on the surface. We got it in, it was just shy of 20, I think it was like 18 and a half or 19 pound. So that was a method that we used. It, it was hard work and then we had to bring the eel up, photograph it, weigh it, and then take the eel all the way back down because there's no you don't want to chuck a 20 pound eel off 30 foot so yeah that was the method using a line off the beach oh it was hard work yeah so but things you do to land fish eh <laughs> yeah i've just put my last cast out now um the doggies are a nightmare i had well over 15 doggies now couple of eels, tidy one, six, seven, eight pounds, something like that. So, yeah, it's a lovely morning. The sun's up. It was Baltic this morning. Oh. When I had that 20 minute snooze, I woke up, I, I couldn't move, I was so cold. Like the rod bag was laid out on the grass, that was solid. So, yep, that's winter for you, but we're here, we're doing it, we're catching fish. You know, yeah, I just put two fresh ones out now, pack the conti away, see what happens. And um, yeah, if you're gonna come to this place, unless you know it, don't come here on your own. You know, especially if, if you get excited with big fish as well, because you're so close to the edge. You know, anglers do take risks when it comes to big fish. You know, I've been, I've done it myself. You know, I've done it myself. Um, especially going down West Wales on my own catching tope, um, which I did a lot of the time. Yeah, you do things that you shouldn't do, really. But yeah, it's, you're high up. The only way down is down the steps behind you. It's not easy to land fish. Anything up to about six pound is fine or you can handball them up but pretty much you get anything big it's hard work so but yeah another little um, story about this place is I think it was March 2018 or 2017 um, me and someone I used to know was planning on going to West Wales on the Spur Dogs um, but some other boys we knew were going, so they did They did the morning tide, high water. Oh, that's a good bite. Oh, that's, another, that's another eel, I can wait. So they did the morning high water, and we were gonna do the evening high water. And it was blowing an absolute northerly, so there's not many places you can go on a northerly down West Wales. We spoke to them around about midday, just before we were getting ready to set off and they had one hus all morning it was dead uh, I think one of them blanked 
So I said to my mate, oh, should we just stay local, northerly wind, get some worm and we'll come off Tresillion. Yeah, all right. So I run Keith and I went angling, got a pound of worm, come down here, first cast, six pound cod. Well, we had six cod in total. My mate had two, I had four. Um, second cast, I think I had a four pound, well, my smallest one was four pound. And he had one then, six pound. Then I had another six pound. Then he had a four pound. And then I had a decent one on. Um, we got it to the edge and it looked double figure. And I was like, and you could see the bait hanging out of his mouth. And I was like, I'm not handballing this up. This was before the method of using a spinning rod. So I cut my line. This was two hours before high water. I cut my line, <laughs> tied it to the rod stand leg. Let it, so let the fish sink a little bit. Um, and just left it there. So two hours up, every now and again, I grabbed the line, he was still on there pulling. Three hours down, I run all the way around, run down in about two foot of water. There was a cod just shy of um, 10 pounds. I think it was nine pound 10 or nine pound 12. So I'll attach a picture to this. So yeah, I got a nice double shot of a six pounder and a nine pound 10. So that fish was stayed on that rig for five hours because I didn't want to risk handballing it up and coming off because I could see I could see he was lightly hooked. So yeah. Yeah there is some good fish to be had off here. Just gotta put the time in, same as um, anywhere else really. But it is dangerous, you gotta take your time. A couple of runners. So yeah nice bite then on the left hand rod. Look like an eel. Got codlin. Let's get back to it. It's another eel. Yes, yeah, just return that eel. So these are my last casts. So a nice bite on that one as well, just then. God, my hands are cold. Woo! It's a cold one. It's definitely minus. Check this one. You know, I should have called him, isn't it? I've had quite a few small boot laces, which is probably one of them. Oh yeah, it's been battered. Absolutely battered. Yeah, the session's come to an end now. I managed to do three hours up, uh, or two and a half hours up, and two, two and a half hours down. Uh, plenty of fish, I reckon well over 20 fish. Um, didn't record them all because it'd get a bit boring, um, to be fair. And to be fair, most of like high water wasn't until half six. It didn't get light till seven, half seven. So it's quite difficult to keep capturing everything in the dark because you've got to make sure the lighting's right. 
so I kind of give up half the time. But yeah, we've got a pout in, probably half a dozen eels, at least half a dozen eels, and well over 15 doggies, probably close to 20. Um, and they were fat as well, they were big. You know, they weren't, they weren't small ones, they were, you know, pound and a half, two pound doggies, you know, bellies on them. So they're either preggers, at the duff, <laughs> yeah. or um, full of food. So yes, um, it's another video for you, but the feedback I'm getting from all the videos, I think I know there's like zero negativity at all. You know, everyone seems to enjoy it. Um, I'm getting hundreds of messages. I don't, if I don't reply to you in time, the amount of messages I get through as soon as a video goes up is unbelievable. You know, I really appreciate it. I feel the love. You know, I'll continue to do the videos as long as you enjoy them. You know, I say I'll, I, I record the good with the bad, take you on my journey, cover everything. You know, my plan is to pretty much fish most of the marks in the Bristol Channel over the next, I don't know, year, two, three, four years, whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, I enjoy it, and long, as long as you keep enjoying it, I'll keep making them for you. So, but yeah, what a, you wouldn't think you wouldn't think this was February now. It's beautiful, but it is absolutely freezing. So, on that note, guys, until the next time, tight lines. <laughs>